everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. It's a beautiful day at the end of May and the jacaranda trees are in bloom, purple blossoms everywhere. It's an amazing day to just be outside. I want to show you better. Look how cool. So pretty. And there's this blossoms all over the ground. Can you see? I don't know if you can. Anyway, I thought today might be a good day to tell you a story. The story happens when I was about 16 years old, maybe 17. Like I said before, I was just this kid in Northern California. Didn't really have anybody to teach me about jazz and uh, had to learn some things on my own. I was saving up all my money to buy CDs and what I really wanted was just to be able to listen to jazz. So we didn't have, like it was the mountains, we didn't have any radio stations up where I was from. But one of my brothers got this bear. It's like this little stuffed bear that was also an AM radio. <laughs> so I would take this little bear and try to dial it just so that I could find any jazz ever. And it never worked. You know, I was just getting guys talking about sports and everything until one night I started to hear some piano music, some jazz piano music. So I dialed in just a little closer and I found that if there was, th there was this one spot in my house it was like between the couch and the heater and if I would just kind of crouch down between the couch and the heater I heard piano music. Guess what I heard? It was a Sunday night and I had somehow just very carefully dialed into NPR was Marion McPartland. I don't remember who she was interviewing that night, but I remember that it changed my life. Marion McPartland was this wonderful jazz piano player from England who started a radio show in 1964 and it ran until she died in 2013. Interviewed hundreds of jazz musicians, mostly piano players on her show. Everybody from Teddy Wilson, Dick Hyman, Bill Evans, Tommy Flanagan, Chick Corea, he was on several times, Brad Meldow, Alicia Keys, you name it. So you imagine 16 year old Amy just looking for some jazz on a Sunday night and I find beautiful piano music. And then it stops. And all of a sudden there's this wonderful woman with this lovely British accent. And she starts to talk about what was just played with somebody else. And it had been a duet. And then the two of them launch in to teaching me. And that continued, well, for years and years. Every Sunday night, Mary and McPartland. Oh my gosh. You guys have to see something so cool. Ha! You're not gonna believe it. Oh my gosh. All right, hold on. What? Oh my gosh. Billy the Fool talks about jazz at Mr. T's house. Ha! Oh! <laughs> Holy moly, did it just get better? I do believe that's the mystery machine. All right, I probably can't get closer without trespassing, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the mystery machine. All right, I found a nice little place. I'm gonna sit down for a little bit and talk to you. I'm gonna rest a little bit. So yeah, Marianne McPartland. Can you believe it just crouched by my heater with a tiny little stuffed animal bear 
but I'll tell you what, my brothers never saw that bear again because I hid it because nobody was going to be messing with that dial after that night. For those of you who have never seen the show before, what Marion would do is she would have a guest on and they would each sit at a grand piano and she'd ask them a little bit about themselves, they'd chat a little bit and then it wouldn't and she's a good question asker. She always got people to tell about their beginnings in music, about their parents, about their schooling, everything. So you learn the artist's background right up front. And then, you know, it never gets more than five minutes into it. And she says, will you play something for me? And then they play something. And they play and she listens and then they talk about it afterward. And she'll say, oh, that's a lovely tune. Where did you learn that tune? And the musician will tell about where they learned it. And then maybe she'll say, how do you learn tunes? Did you le do you learn them from recordings? Do you learn them from sheet music? Do you have fake books? And all kinds of interesting discussion. And they'll talk about that for a little while. And then she'll say, how about we play a duet? And then, and then they'll, well, they pretend to think of a duet on the spot. I think they planned it out all the time. But they'll, they'll, they'll say, well, how about a nice blues? And then they'll think of a nice blues head. Or maybe, or maybe the discussion will have led to Duke Ellington and they'll say, well, how about we play a Duke Ellington tune? And it, it always feels really organic and then they'll play a duet together. When do you get to hear piano duets like that? On the fly, improvised, amazing. So many of them. So after that, then they'll talk a little more and then, and then maybe she'll say, well, can I play one for you? And then she'll play one for them. And I mean, they don't need anything but the music to facilitate these conversations and, and such great conversations. You can hear Teddy Wilson, and, and in fact, a lot of these are available on Spotify. Oh, maybe 10 of them, 10 or 12 of them. And the rest, I'm pretty sure you can find on YouTube. But you can listen to Teddy Wilson, like pretty much debunk my whole video about real books and tell you that, well, not real books, but he said that he would love like his favorite way to learn a tune is to get a hold of the very original sheet music from the show like if you're gonna learn hello young lovers you know you actually find the sheet music by Rodgers and Hammerstein that was meant for that, that came out when the King and I came out and then you learn exactly what Richard Rodgers did you know which chords he he meant slash chords or you know whatever he said you can learn the exact chords from the original sheet music. So that's really cool, Teddy Wilson just telling it, telling you how he learns tunes, I love that. I remember one night in particular, and if you guys know who, please tell me, because I've, I've searched, I, I spent the morning searching for it and I can't find it. Um, but somebody was on her show and they played Thelonious Monk's composition Friday the 13th. They played it as a duet. That's a cool song by Monk, and in fact, in thinking about this the last couple of days, I went and transcribed it, and I, I think I'll make a video really soon about, about how Thelonious Monk plays um, on, on Friday the 13th. But it has this bass line that goes, uh, it just goes, do, 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 like that. And then the right hand would go, do, 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 do. I think like that. And, and the two of them fit together. And so one of the piano players, like maybe Mary Ann McPartland, was playing that. And that sounded so interesting to me. And then the other piano player, whoever they were, helped me out. If you guys know who they were, I'd love to know. Played the melody. And they played it enough times that I wrote it down. I ran, I got my staff paper, and I wrote it down. And then after that day, every time I watched the show, I just had my staff paper in my hand taking notes on it. Then I tried to teach it to my brother, the left hand part, and to my mom. And I just really, really wanted somebody to play that left hand part so that I could play that melody that went back and forth between swinging and straight. I thought that was amazing. I didn't know it was possible. Just, you know, little things like that. Just to me in my living room from Marianne McPartland. Treasures. Just little pieces of melodies, chords, stories from the great jazz piano players that I would never have known otherwise if it weren't for her. I actually got to go hear Marianne McPartland at Birdland in, ooh, probably 1999. She was playing with, uh, 
she was playing with Bill Crow and Joe Morello. And I ended up sitting next to some executives, like some of her record producer types. I don't even know who they were. But John and I sat at a table next to them and they said, would you like to meet Marion? And on her break, they just walked me right over. I got to sit down and I just got to kind of kneel down and shake her hand and thank her. I don't remember exactly what I said to her, but I think I just thanked her, you know. I only had a second, like not very long at all. And I just thanked her for giving me, you know, access to a world I wouldn't have had access to otherwise anyway. And she was at a table full of friends, so many friends, and she was really nice to me. I mean, I just shook her hand. and told her all of that really quickly. And she just said, thank you, dear, you know. But I'm so glad to meet Mary McPartland. You know, most of the time you have experiences with jazz musicians growing up, listening to them, having them teach you in the privacy of your own home through their recordings or whatever. And most of the time, most of the time you never get to meet those people, so when you do, that's special. I know that you guys have all had experiences where you got to meet your heroes. And that's one of mine. What's up, Mr. Mailman? Great to hang out with you guys today. Tell my little story. And I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.